okay? <laughs> All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Maria. Welcome to another Resurrected Hope Ministries Deep Dive Bible Study. Well, hopefully all of our technical issues that were happening last week are resolved and you'll have a better experience on tonight. Praise God for the, uh, the technicians that finally came out and fixed it. So welcome. We hope that you had a beautiful day on today and we appreciate you joining us tonight because we know that there are so many other Bible studies you could have joined, but we thank you so much for joining Resurrected Hope on tonight. We just appreciate the support that many of you have given us as we continue to grow, as we continue to build, and most of all, as we continue to hear instructions from God, because we don't move until God says, now cast your net on the other side of the boat. So first, giving honor to God for blessing us to be in the land of the living just one more time, giving honor to the senior pastor of Resurrected Hope Ministries, Pastor Jonathan Perry, who is working behind the scenes, helping to make this broadcast happen. We praise God for uh, him and the vision that God placed in his spirit. I think and praise God that uh, we're still here and we're going to keep pushing forward oh, yeah. until God says different. Hallelujah. So before we get started, uh, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Got some preliminary things to say to you, and then we'll get into tonight's topic. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God and glory, Jesus, Savior of the world, we call upon your great name and we just honor you and acknowledge you as the master teacher on tonight. We invoke your power and your presence and most of all, your anointing, that this word will come forth as you packaged it, as you downloaded it into me. Give me the strength in my voice and my body to proclaim your word on tonight, to teach your word in a way that will be receptible to those that join in on tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, tug on the heart of those that need to hear a word from God on tonight. And oh God, help me to facilitate this in a way that is, brings clarity and brings somebody hope. For realizing, oh God, we know that your word is living. And Lord God, it does not go out void. Yeah. So I commit myself to you, Lord God. As I speak, oh God, give me, Lord, the strength. Lord, we thank you right now for what you are about to say and what you are about to do. Bless your word mightily, Lord, and bind up and rebuke every dark spirit yeah. that would try to hinder the forward progress of this word. We love you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. So again, I say welcome. Um, you know, we meet every Thursday night here on Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we hope that you join early and that you stay all the way through with each Bible study because many times there are some key points that we mention in our studies and I would hate for you to miss it. Yes. But I want to remind you that we record all of our Bible studies because we believe that you should have access to God's word 24 seven. And so we record them also and place them on our resurrected hope ministries, YouTube channel. So please subscribe so that you know when we upload new data and you can go back to our very first Bible study three years ago when we started resurrected hope ministries. In addition, my God, you will have the opportunity anytime throughout the broadcast to bless our ministry in your giving. Yes, we have online giving options on our website at res-hope.com at uh, www. We have it right here throughout the broadcast. If you want to know more about our ministry, know more about our church and what we're doing, please visit our website. Ah, uh, my God. And if you see it on our website and you desire to join arms and become a member, or even if you don't want to be a member, but you just want to be a help to Resurrected Hope Ministries, our contact information is on our site. And I just ask that you reach out to us because we would love to connect with you. See where you might fit in because we believe in equipping you. We believe in mentoring you yeah. and launching you into your God-giving ministry. Yeah, all right, all right. So I just wanted to say that at the head to give some folks some time to come on in without missing any part of tonight's uh, a, a broadcast in Bible study. Amen. All right. And as I said, I want to remind you all that didn't hear last week. Uh, 
I'm still recovering. <laughs> Voice is still uh, not back to where it used to be. But I just want to give God glory that it is coming back. And he has given me the strength to be able to do Bible studies. I had the honor of preaching a Mother's Day sermon, my first message since the surgery in February. So I give God the glory that he gave me the strength and held up this voice to be able to continue the yes, work he that he blessed and anointed me to do. Amen. 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 All right. Now we hope <laughs> that you have brought your Bible. You've gotten your pen and you have your pad of paper. We're going to share a lot of scripture with you tonight. I hope to get through this lesson, but it might be a part two. So I'm going to take my time. Okay. All right. So tonight's lesson, we're going to focus on the power of grace, mm. the power of grace. I really want to teach you tonight, really how much power there is in grace and what Jesus Christ did for us. Uh, first, let's get into something that a pastor likes to do. And that is give you some definitions. So we're going to give you some definitions. This is his thing. He likes giving those definitions. So I'm going to uh, do that for you on tonight. So let's first define and break down what grace means in biblical terms. Grace in short terms just means God's unmerited favor. God's unmerited favor. So if the grace of God is God's unmerited favor, then what does unmerited mean? Unmerited means undeserving. So now it means God's undeserving favor. In other words, we don't deserve this kind of favor. So then what is favor? Might as well break it all the way down. I always like to say break it all the way down to the white meat. <laughs> um, so favor, I like this one. You know, I, I looked up all kinds of definitions and I want, wanted the one that resonated and wasn't too heady. And it says favor listen, listen, is God stepping into your situation to make a worthwhile difference. Favor oh is God, ain't this good, stepping into your situation to make a worthwhile difference. It's basically just God's kindness <laughs> just because so so when we say that grace is God's unmerited favor mm -hmm. let's put it all together now it's God's undeserving kindness to step into your situation to make a worthwhile difference My God. Ooh, wow now, now we see how beautiful grace is. Yes. Now we see what God did. It's basically when you don't have the degree, the knowledge, the ability, the finances, the connections, mm -hmm. the strength, the heart, the understanding, or any other thing <laughs> to help your situation or your task. Well, guess what? Then here comes God swooping in, giving you something that you don't even have or deserve uh -oh. to be able to move forward in whatever task or whatever situation comes your way. That's the power, hallelujah, Jesus. of grace. Grace. Yes. So let me take you back a little bit. We live, God, God deals with mankind in something we call dispensations. Yes. In other words, the way God is dealing with us now is very different from the way he dealt in the first dispensation, which was with Adam. We call it the Adamic dispensation. That's where he dealt with Adam and Eve before the fall. Yes. Okay? Yes. And each dispensation, God dealt with man differently. In each dispensation, there was a different kind of salvation. Mm -hmm. And so, in, and, when, and you know what? 
it just came to me, Pastor. We're going to have to do a Bible study series on dispensations. On dispensations. Oh, that's going to be powerful. We gonna, that's going to be coming. We're going to get that because I, I think it's time. Because I don't think we understand, hallelujah, the privilege that we have of living in this dispensation. Right. We right. are living in the sixth dispensation. And it is called the dispensation of grace. Right. Right. Grace. Grace, yes. yes. And so, once again, dispensation just means the time frame in which God deals with man. In other words, how does God deal with man? Mm. All right? Okay. And there are seven. So, we are in the sixth. <laughs> and mm. it is called the dispensation of grace. Now, I don't want to take up all of our time just talking about the dispensation, because we'll get into that in another Bible study. Mm -hmm. But the reason I wanted to is because we are talking about the power of grace. Prior to this dispensation of grace, it was dispensation of law. Mm -hmm. In other words, that dispensation was prior to Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it was the dispensation where man followed a set of laws a set of, of, of instructions, right. you know, was always that kind of operation. That's how God dealt with man. Man was required to kill lambs and f to cover his sin, the blood of a lamb, because Jesus hadn't come yet. Mm -hmm. Dispensation of grace began when Jesus came on the scene mm -hmm. and he died for our sins. When he gave up the ghost, mm -hmm. it began the dispensation of grace. Oh. oh, that's what Jesus did for you and I. Mm -hmm. He didn't abolish the law. Mm -hmm. He came to fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. So in other words, everything is intertwined. It's fulfilled. So when we used to have to kill a lamb to cover our sins, right. Jesus, hallelujah, was the final lamb. And now his blood is posted so that now in a spiritual realm, we are covered, our sins are covered. Oh, we are God. living, hallelujah, in the day of grace, the dispensation mm. of grace. So there's a power behind what Jesus did for you and I, yes. amen? So we're going to get into this about how grace really operates. And I have a lot of scriptures, but I'm going to read them. But again, go back and you can write them down. So let's first talk about abounding in grace. And what we mean by that is God's grace is abundant. Yes. So it doesn't just happen once and then we don't get it anymore. There is no end to the way that God pours out his blessings and his grace upon his people. He wants to do this. Wow. We're the one as human beings that push it away and want to go into our own way of doing things. That's, right. That's why God never wanted mankind to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because man, ever since then, has been doing things their own way. I don't need God. I got the answer. I'll handle it. Mm -hmm. And what is that doing? It is killing this world daily. But through this endless reserve of God's grace, he enriches our lives. Yeah, he does. Oh my God. He unites us together in the family, which is the body of Christ. Yeah. Let's give you some scripture for that. Second Corinthians nine and eight says, and God, and this is King James version, by the way, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you mm. that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound, or in other words, may be abundant mm -hmm. to every good work. See, we're Jesus. backing this up with the book. Hallelujah, Hello. Jesus. God is saying in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 that he's given us all this so that we'll have sufficiency in every good work. In other words, so that we'll have the ability 
so that we'll have the means, yes. so that you'll have the strength, so that you'll have peace. He's given you abundant grace. Oh Hallelujah. That's a place to praise God for. My God, my God. Then he says in Ephesians 4 and 7, but unto everyone, everyone of us is given grace mm -hmm. according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Mm -hmm. So that means we all go through certain things. But what I go through might require more grace to get through than maybe something that you're going through. Right. So God many times will say, oh, they're going to have to go through that. Mm -hmm. So let me put a double portion of grace yes. till that they can get them through. The one thing that God never promised is that just because we get saved, it doesn't mean that we will not have problems. That's right. That doesn't mean that. But when you're on the side of God, God is here to help you. And we'll get more into that. Amen. Amen. James 4 and 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, yes. but giveth grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, if you just humble yourself before him, he Bye. says he has bucket loads of grace Bye. to give to you. God isn't stingy. Mm -hmm. He says, I've got more grace than you'll ever be able to handle. Bye. What is grace? Again, it's God's unmerited or undeserving favor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he steps into your situations with that undeserving favor that he gives you so that that way you can be able to get through. He I makes know. it where it's worthwhile. He makes your situations able to make it through. Jesus. We're talking about the power of grace if you're just joining us. One more scripture. He says in John 1 and 16, he says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Mm -hmm. So we have fullness, and then we have grace on top of grace. Mm -hmm. That's why we. it's a privilege that you were born into this dispensation of grace privilege. because Jesus made this way of escape for us. Mm -hmm. Imagine living under the laws and the sacrifices and all the rituals of the Old Testament. Just start reading the Old Testament and see how God dealt with human beings or mankind in those dispensations. Yes. That was hard. But Jesus came, my God, with the grace now to help us. There's no excuse, people. No excuse for you not to make it. No excuse for you not to live a fulfilled life. Because God has fully equipped us with grace. Amen. 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 So that's one power of grace is that the fact that it will never run out. It's, it's abundant. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another power of grace. We're saved by grace. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're a part of a religion that makes you work for salvation, something is wrong. Because God is telling us that we are saved by the grace of God. In other words, we don't deserve salvation. Think about the way you were living. Do you deserve all that God has given you? Do you deserve the salvation of God? No. What we deserve is death, hell, and the grave, honey. That's what we deserve because we, we had our backs towards God. But God had a plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. See, by God's grace, sinners are saved mm -hmm. and reborn and brought into the family of God. And because of that, God also offers eternal life to everyone that believes in the plan of salvation yes, Jesus. through Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. If you believe in that, then my, my God, you've got a world of grace that is offered to you. Mm -hmm. See, through Christ, what I like to call substitutionary death on the cross. In other oh, words, God. Jesus died in our place. Yes, oh, did. glory, glory, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus said, I will be the substitute. We should have died on that cross. Oh, we should God. have been beaten for our sins. We should have bled and been hung. But Jesus came, hallelujah. God. And he said, Hallelujah. I'll be the substitute for all. Hallelujah, yeah. Jesus. And so God, because of that, pronounced us not guilty. 
Ah. Not guilty Hallelujah. because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We don't have to sit here and continue to be pressed down and condemned yeah. for the sins that we commit. Yeah. Because of Jesus and the blood, we have salvation. Wow. My God, my God. And again, as we say, sinners, yeah, we deserve to die in our sins. Mm. But God gave us life. Right. Let's read some scriptures to support this. Uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, verses six through nine. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse six through nine says, and hath raised us up together yeah. and made us sit together in heavenly places in uh -huh. Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. verse seven, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Yeah. In his kindness, uh, there's that word again, towards us, how? Through Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Verse 8, for by grace mm. are ye saved mm -hmm. through faith. So let me, let me stop right there. Mm -hmm. For by grace mm -hmm. are ye saved through, through faith. Yeah. So in other words, God has an abundance of grace but in order for you to receive it, you've got to have faith that it's actually there. Yes. You've got to have faith that God's grace is going to save you. Mm -hmm. Without believing it, how can you even receive it? Oh, ah, because we don't actually, in this dispensation, see the blood like in the, La in the Old Testament mm -hmm. where they slaughtered animals on the altar and they could see the bloody mess. Right. But now everything is spiritual. It's happening the same way, but it is happening in the spirit realm. So you've got to have faith to believe that grace is at work in your life and that it is by grace through faith that you're saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's a gift. God is freely giving it to you. But the caveat is you've got to come to him. Gotcha. Hallelujah. His spirit, his word will draw you. It will tap you on your shoulder. But you got to give him a yes. yes. Nobody can make you say yes. yes. God said, I have set before you life and death, good and evil. Oh. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Yes. Verse 9 says, not of works, mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. That's right. So you can't earn salvation. You can't knock on enough doors to get into heaven. Uh-oh. You can't do 10 somersaults and two twirls to get in heaven. You can't pay your way, rich man, into heaven. God is telling us here that it is not of works, lest any man should boast. Lest any person say, well, I have a million dollars so I can pay my way into God's salvation. God said, no. I knocked on 1,500 doors this weekend, so I'm earning my way. No, God said, you're not going to be able to boast. God is telling us that this grace is for those who humble yes. themselves before him. Yes. When you show God humility, my God, he's coming with buckets of grace yes. to let you in to salvation. See, you have to believe that repentance turns you away from sin and towards God. So right. when you repent of your sins, you got to believe it. You got to believe that you actually made a mind change, mm -hmm. a turn away from sin, and that you turn towards God. Right. You have to believe that water baptism in the name of Jesus is washing your sins away mm -hmm. and applying the blood like it was to the lamb, like it was through the lambs to your life to cover you for the rest of your walk with God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You got to believe that the blood is there. If you don't, my God, it is of none effect. Uh, you've got to believe that you can be filled with his Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of the living God, and that it is proven that his spirit is dwelling in you through the evidence of speaking in tongues. You got to believe that it is a heavenly language. And my God, when all of it comes together, it is the plan of salvation. Uh, and we can go to Acts 2.38, book, chapter, and verse, all through the book of Acts to show you all those that received salvation because of the grace of God. 
every man, woman, boy, and girl should have died in their sins. But Jesus came, made a way of escape yes, for did. you and I. Why, why do so many turn away? Mm. Why do so many say, I don't want it, I don't need it? Yes. My God, there's a power. Glory be to God oh, in God. grace. Glory, yes. hallelujah. So then by gr the grace of God, once you receive salvation, his grace also helps you to walk it out, to keep living, to learn how to have a kingdom mind, to learn how to live this way of holiness. But it's all undeserving. We're still here walking in God's kindness, walking in God's grace, because he said, I love you so much that I want to help you to be successful yes. in your walk. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's give you two scriptures about being saved by grace. Romans, the third chapter, verse 23 through 25. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace mm -hmm. through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Justified means just as if I never sinned. And the only reason that we can be justified is because he freely gave us grace. Amen. Come on, y'all. You got to see how this is coming together. You got to see how God meticulously built this plan, this way of escape over 2,000 years ago. God put thought in this thing. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. My God, this is why you shouldn't hesitate to praise him yes. whenever you can because he's so wise. My God, this thing will blow your mind. Hallelujah. My God, he says in verse 25 of Romans, the third chapter, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood mm. to declare his righteousness for the remission or removal of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. My God, God is telling us that this salvation, this grace, the things that he put together, it washes away your past. Yes. It replaces that old life that you live. Yes. So when you are in the, in the body of Christ, my God, the blood of Jesus keeps you from being condemned. It keeps you from the enemy lying to you, telling you that you have no hope. Yeah. It keeps that because God, God sees is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Titus, the second chapter, verses 11 through 12. Titus, second chapter, 11 through 12. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Here we go again. Grace is power. The grace of God excuse me, of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. It's available to everyone. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So even though the world and its worldly systems is in a hand basket going to hell, there's no hope for the world and its systems. It's going to continually deteriorate. So if you're sitting here thinking the world is going to get any better, it's not. I don't care who's the president. I don't care what happens. I don't care what laws are passed or what laws are not. Well, I don't care. The world is just doing what it's doing, but it's going to burn up and die anyway. As you see down through the years, the world has gotten worse. That's why it is so important that you get into the body of Christ for your covering because you don't want to follow the world down to its horrible pit. You don't want to be living in this world without the grace of God upon you, without being on God's side because there's going to be so much hell that is coming. It's coming, y'all. You see what's happened in the last two and a half years. My goodness, you see what's happening right now. There's so much famine in the land. There's so much pestilence in the land. People can't even buy baby food. I'm just watching it. Formula. A short, whoever thought there would be a, a, a shortage on formula? Who would have thought, America, that we would have shortage on the things that we're so used to having plenty? And you don't think that the world is coming to an end? Jesus. If you're not in Christ, the things that are happening in the world 
will right. cause you to lose your mind. Right. If you're not in Christ, the chaos, the wars, and everything that's happening in the world will get to you so bad that that enemy will whisper in your ear and fool you into thinking that it's time to check out of this world and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, that's not a way of escape. If the enemy is talking to you, telling you that the world is too much for you and you want to cancel your life, you want to take uh, uh, commit suicide, listen to me, listen. The day you commit suicide, mm. you enter in eternal damnation. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, there's no more hope once you cross over. But as long as you're in this earth, no matter how bad it gets, there's hope that things could change. There's hope that you can get help. So don't you dare let the devil fool you into thinking suicide is a way of escape. No, honey, let me tell you, the only way of escape, and I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now, the only way of escape is finding Jesus Christ and being covered in his grace, yes. covered in his peace, covered in his love. You, you don't feel loved? I'm telling you, try Jesus. Yeah. You don't feel like you have peace? I'm telling you, try Jesus. Uh, because God said in his word, my God, that he has all things for you. And things. that in Christ, my God, there's an abundance, uh, uh, my oh. God, of grace. We read it. We read it. So when you have a real relationship with God and you begin to truly offer yourself to him, mm -hmm. my God, your life will never be the same. While all the chaos is going on in the earth, while everything is happening, you can find peace. Yes, my yes. God, you can find love. Yes. When mankind doesn't love you, the love of Christ will give you a love that, my God, you can't even explain. Yes. But you got to repent. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name in water. And yes. you've got to receive the tongue-talking Holy Ghost. Yes. Anything less, you're living beneath your privilege yes. and yes. you're not getting the full experience. My, Hallelujah. My, I don't know my. why I went off and said that. Somebody had needed it. Somebody right. needed it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank All right, you. let's keep moving forward. Um, so every day, we ought to praise God and worship him because it was grace it's grace that gave you salvation. You didn't deserve it. But just out of the <clears throat> kindness and love of Christ, he opened the door for us. So we don't have to drag a cow to the, to the, to the altar and slaughter it anymore right. for our sins. Jesus was the one and final sacrifice. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so far we talked about abundant grace. We talked about that we're saved by grace. And now, here we go. His grace is sufficient for every need. My God. Mm. God gives grace to those who are in need and who humbly come to him for help. His grace supplies us with the power to serve. His grace supplies us with the power to preach the gospel and be witnesses. His grace is even provided to help us to get through the suffering and the persecutions and the hardships of life. I'm here to tell you that without the grace of God, it is difficult to deal with the things that are in this world. But God said, my grace is sufficient because God is not going to just take away everything in our lives. We live in this world. So unfortunately, we're going to have to suffer because of sin. And as long as we're in this world, we're going to suffer. Yes, and so, but God knows just how much to put mm -hmm. upon us so we don't burn up, <laughs> so we aren't destroyed. Yes. But he gives us grace to make it through to the other side. Amen. As long as you stick with him, you've got grace. Amen. So let's read a few scriptures here. Second Corinthians 12 and 9. Here we go. I just said this. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's Paul talking. Because Paul had asked God to remove the thorn from his side. It was something Paul had to deal with. And he prayed three times for God to remove it. Yeah. And God said, oh, no, I'm not going to remove that. But my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'll give you the strength to carry that. Yeah. So yes, I'm here to tell you, there are some things we're just going to have to carry. 
But God said, I've given you grace to balance that thing mm -hmm. so that it doesn't overtake you. So, so because of that, Paul eventually said to, to God, man, I, I can't. Then I gladly rather glory in my infirmities. Yeah. In other words, you will get to a point where you can praise God even in your infirmities, even in your troubles. Yeah. When you don't have a dime in the bank, there's a praise that will rise up in you. Yeah. Because now God, you, you can glory in it. Mm -hmm. Even if everything isn't the way you want it to be, you can glory, glory. in it. Because he said that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Oh, I'm there. I've been there, been there when I just had to praise God and worship God and do my dance. And my God, I can glory in the fact that thank you, Lord. That's why he said that everything give thanks. give thanks. Everything give thanks. Just praise him anyhow, because the grace of God is upon you. It hasn't destroyed you. Jesus. I mean, we've, we've gone through so much, but we're still here. Yes. You're still here, aren't you? Yes. My God, that's the power of grace thank working you, in your life. The power of grace working in your life because you're still here. Yes. When you look back at all that you come through, you're still here. You're still yes. in your right mind. You're still doing things that you want to do. Why? Because of the power, the yes. power of grace. Glory. Hallelujah. I My felt that God. thing. Glory. Hallelujah. All right. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10 says, but by, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Uh, oh, glory. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yeah. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that. You need to write that. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. Oh, my, my, my. He said, the, but the grace of God, I am what I am. Yes. I'm only what I am because of the grace of God. I don't boast in anything that God has blessed me Jesus. with. I don't boast in my gifts, talents, and abilities because mm. I'm only what I am. Hallelujah, because of the grace of God. Yes. That's why I can't look my nose down at anybody that's struggling. God's given me a heart of compassion. Yes. You know why? Because if it weren't for the grace of God, there go I. Mm. There go you. So you better stop talking about and gossiping in the corner about folks because they messed up. Yeah. You better stop putting it on the front page because somebody had made a mistake and had a fall. Come on. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, mm. you could be in the same thing. Your family member could be in the yes. same thing. Yes. You don't know the conversations that person had with God in their private, private yes. closet. And you're snickering and talking about them. You better stop talking about that poor girl that had a teen pregnancy, yeah. uh, got pregnant. You better stop talking about that person that stepped out on their marriage. You better stop yeah. talking about that person, my God, who's drinking in the back closet, got drunk on a Saturday night. Yeah. You don't know their story. God. And God oftentimes will teach you a lesson by bringing that same thing to you. Uh oh. Better be careful because God could wait you out. It may not happen to you, but it'll happen through your children. Uh -oh. You don't want to show forgiveness. You want to hold people to the wall because of what they've done. Okay, be careful. Because yeah. it may not happen to you, but it'll come through your children. It'll yes. come through your family members, yes. friends. Yes. And then God will bring it back to your memory how you treated somebody. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Be careful. Because just like God shows you and I grace, mm -hmm. guess what? We have to show each other grace. Yes. Each other grace. Hey, Why man. are we so hard on one another? Hey, Why man. are we so quick to talk about folk because they not so perfect? Mm. Well, it's only by the grace of God that your stuff don't stink. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> All right. Ephesians 3 and 7. Again, we're still talking about the power of grace. Yes. And we're in this subcategory. His grace is sufficient for every need. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3, 7 through 8 says... Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God that is given me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints. This is Paul again. Is grace is this grace given that I should preach amongst the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Yeah. So I'm speaking now to those of you that have assignments on your life as ministers. 
And that's whether, and I say minister is to cover it all because yeah. minister just means servant of God. That's it. All right. It means to serve. Yeah. So whether your title is, is minister, licensed minister, elder, pastor, mm -hmm. evangelist, apostle, whatever your title is to proclaim the word of God, to teach and preach the word, mm -hmm. God has given you the grace yes. to do it. Even if in your natural being you have a lot of fears and anxieties about preaching and teaching and witnessing and evangelizing, yes. you better draw on the grace of God. God said, if I called you to it, I yes. graced you for it. Amen. If I called you to be a pastor, don't you dare get tired and give up. Uh, draw on the grace of God. It ain't no joke being a pastor. If you are an apostle, which means that you not only have a church that you are managing, but you've got other churches under that people are pulling right. on you. God has graced you for that. Amen. That's why it is so important that you not run after titles that you're not graced for. Mm. Whoa. Uh oh. Do not run after a call or a position or a ministry that you are not graced for. Okay, if God, you better make sure without a shadow of a doubt that God has called you to whatever you think he called you to. Yeah, that's right. Because if you're not graced for it, it will take you out. Yes, it will wear you out. My the God. world of darkness will beat you up. I've My seen God. it left and right. That's why pastor and I, I mean, we really, 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 really sought God to make sure he called us to Amen. this. Still seeking. Still seeking. <laughs> Made sure. That's why we don't move. I don't care. How, it could be 10 years can go by. And if it's just me and pastor, we ain't moving until God says, now cast your net on the other side of the boat. Mm -hmm. We know that there is an appointed time where he's going to fill our nets with fishes and they're going to break. But we ain't right. moving until he says, now do this, now do that, now do this. Amen. We ain't want this call. But oh, God Jesus. kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Yes. And put, he wouldn't let us let it go. Right. So I'm here to tell you, make sure. Don't just go running out, start no church. Because for any other reason than God has called you. Amen. Don't dare seek for a bishop and apostle. Yes. Just because it sounds glorious. Like right. I say, the world of darkness will run you over and into the ground. That's if you right. play with this thing. That's Don't right. play with it. Don't play with it. That's right. Acts 4 and 33 says... And with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And yes. great grace and great grace mm. was upon them all. Let me say that again. Acts 4 and 33. Mm. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And right. great grace was upon them all. See, the apostles were given grace to do what they were doing. And they did a lot. The, the, the apostles changed the entire world. Jesus didn't need thousands of people to change the world. He started with a little flame of apostles. Mm -hmm. But they were given the grace to do it. Yes. Amen. They were given the grace yes. to do it. Yes. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to just go into these six types of grace. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, let's try to get through it. See, we got a little less than 15 minutes. So we'll, we'll start this list if we have to continue next week. We'll go ahead and continue. But let's yeah. just get through this because I'd rather take my time. So six types of grace. Because, see, we just hear the word grace as this, uh, God's given me grace. But really, how does that grace look and where does it show up? Mm. Again, we're talking about the power of grace. Yes. So I, I tried to think of some things and I came up with six. It's much, probably much more. Okay. Number one, grace shows up. In God's forgiveness. Mm. Forgiveness is a type of grace. Forgiveness is a type of grace. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is a type of grace. In other words, remember what we said grace was? God's undeserving favor. How many times don't you deserve forgiveness? That's why forgiveness is a type of grace. See, we all do wrong. We all do something. Even after we get saved, we still mess up. And the Bible calls it sin. And that sin leaves us guilty. Mm -hmm. 
guilty people need to be condemned and punished unless they are forgiven. And unless they are declared guilt free. First John, first John, the second chapter, verse one says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. Oh, glory be God. With the father. Who is it? Jesus Christ, the righteous. My God, my God. Jesus Christ is the one who is fighting for you. He is the reason that you get forgiveness. That's why forgiveness is a type of grace. It's a type of undeserving favor that God has provided for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is because of him that we can be forgiven so that now on this side, side. when we sin, all we have to do is go to Jesus Christ and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I did this. I lied on my taxes. Forgive me, God. I lied. I stole this thing from the store. And the Bible says in 1 John 2 and 1, one, that if any man sin, we, the people of God, have an advocate. Yeah. We have someone who is fighting for us, going behalf, going on behalf of us to the Father, and that's Jesus Christ, to say, mm-hmm. not guilty. He's our judge. So don't let the enemy cause you to waddle in sin. You yeah. sin, and now you get further away from God. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. As soon as you fall, as soon as you fail, go straight to God. Ask for forgiveness because that's part of the abundant grace that he has given us. Hallelujah. My God, in Jesus Christ, we're forgiven for everything we've ever done in the past and everything we do in the present and everything we'll ever do. Right. But you got to come to him and ask him for forgiveness. That's according to 1 John 1 and 9. It says, if we confess our sins... Mm -hmm. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins Mm -hmm. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You don't have to say three Hail Marys and go to some person in a box. Come on now. You don't need somebody in between you and God anymore that's a human being. No priest can ever resolve you of your sin. God said you Mm -hmm. need to come to him. You can go straight to Jesus. You don't need a man in between you and Jesus. Uh-huh. That's part of the grace. Uh-huh. That's part of the plan of salvation. Just go straight to the him and he will re- forgive you. Hallelujah. You so type one was forgiveness, type of grace. Mm-hmm. Then another type of grace is acceptance. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, God not only forgives us through grace, but he welcomes us. He yeah. accepts us into a relationship with him. Isn't it nice to be accepted? Yeah. Isn't it nice to be a part of something? Well, this is what grace does because God is not handing you a list of prerequisites to be a part of this group. It's not like joining a Greek organization where you got to go through all this stuff just to be a be a, a Delta or I don't even know them all or a, Whatever. (laughs) I don't even know all the names of the Greek organization. You don't have to go through all of that. God said that it's because of my grace. I accept you into this fold. I accept you into this family. He adopts us as his children. And because of that, we now have this father child relationship. I know you can name some celebrities that you wish you were a part of. You know, don't you wish you were part of Oprah or Tyler Perry's family? Can you imagine? But what you would have to do to get a part of that? Well, we have a greater acceptance that you should be shooting for because it is the grace of God that allows you to be accepted into the family of Jesus Christ. That's what Romans 8 and 15 says. It says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. So what does Abba mean? Abba just means Father. So basically he's saying, Father, Father. But the reason that he says Abba is because Abba is that uh, 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 Hebrew word or Aramaic word that means intimate relationship like a child to a father. 
My, my God, like a father to a child. Yes. It's deep. It's deep. It's like my daddy. Uh, <laughs> my God. And that's the grace that gives us that. It grace gives us that acceptance. Yes. You see why God says he has abundant grace. Glory be to God. My God. Let's keep moving. First Peter 5, 6 through 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he might exalt you in due time, mm -hmm. casting all your care upon him. He care for he careth for you. Yes. See, we, we can sit on his lap and he brings our and bring our needs and our concerns and even our yes. failures to him, just like a father. Yes. And he responds like that loving kind father yes. and that's why the enemy wants to keep us away that's why when you sin or when you fail when you're having troubles the enemy rushes in and starts whispering in your ear because yeah. he doesn't want you to remember that you have a father that's right. and if you just go to him my god he is there for you yes. glory be to god wow. my god then the other thing that 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 number three so we have forgiveness is a type of grace. We have acceptance that's a type of grace. Mm -hmm. Then we have his presence. Ah, number three, his presence is a type of grace. So just like accepting us into the family, the grace of God's presence means that the father is not distant. God is not some distant God, but he's close. Mm -hmm. God is present with us wherever we are, whomever we're with and whatever we're doing. Why? Because that grace enabled that for us. Psalms 145 and 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them, all them that call upon him. Nigh means near. The yeah. Lord is near unto them, yeah. all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. See, God is not afar off. Mm -hmm. God is all places. He's omniscient. That means he's everywhere. You've got some religions where God is so far. He's not an intimate God. Right. He's not there. He, they, you know, you're praying some distance away. But God said, no, because of grace, I wanted to commune with you. But yeah. I couldn't commune with you before because there wasn't anything between us, the blood to cover. So oh, because God. your sins were stenched before him. But because of the grace of God and the blood of Jesus, God doesn't smell the stench of our sin when we're talking with him. We can talk with him and invite his presence. Ah, Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. why every time I pray before I pray, I always say, God, I invoke Hallelujah. and invite your presence. Hallelujah. And my God, it is a powerful thing when you can attend a church that you feel. Feel the presence of Hallelujah. God. I can't stand a dead church. I don't want to be nowhere where I can't feel the presence of God. Hallelujah, my God. See, there's so many religions who see God as a far being. There's no intimate relationship, yeah. you know, but I, I dare you to try Jesus and uh, being a part of him because without this grace, without the blood of Jesus, my God, we would see God as a consuming fire. We yeah. would see him like the people did in the Old Testament. My mm -hmm. God, but we have this intimate God. See, the Bible tells us that in his grace, he's made a place in us where he dwells. Yes. It wasn't enough for God to just forgive us, but he literally unzipped us. Yeah. Mm. Come on. And got inside of us by his Holy Spirit. My God. So he's with us all the time. St. John 14 and 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Holy whom the Father will send in my name, talking about Jesus, Jesus, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, yes. whatsoever I've said unto you. Glory yes. be to God. My God, I'm just going to finish this out so we don't have to do a part two. So if you, if, I, if I'm about five minutes over, hang with me now. Amen. All right. The fourth type of grace is enablement. And we went through this a little bit. God's not simply content in giving us salvation and then leaving us alone until eternity. That's not what God is all about. But he rather, he wants us to become more like him. So we are in a, we are a work in progress and, and, and he's, he, he wants us to further his kingdom right here on earth. Yeah, he wants yeah. us to operate with a kingdom mind. He wants to teach us how to operate in a spiritual realm. But sin and carnality 
constantly leaves us weak and lame and falling down and yeah. getting up. Yeah. So God's grace intervenes to give us power and strength. That's what we mean by the fourth type, which is enablement. It enables us that even though we're still weak in the flesh with our carnal minds, always going back to what's comfortable and convenient, yeah. the grace of God is there when he enables us to get up. When right. it enables us to lay aside the sin yeah, and the, right. the, 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 the weight and the sin that so easily oh, besets us. Oh. See, that's grace helping us while we're here in the midst to be able to live a holy and a sanctified life. That's the only reason that we're able to live holy yes. is because of the grace of God. Because we live in this sinful world. So oftentimes people ask, how are you able to resist sin? Mm -hmm. How are you able not to go there and indulge when it's all around you? The grace of God. Uh, My God, because that's why it says in Acts 1 and 8, mm -hmm. but ye shall receive power, uh, power, when after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Uh, See, that's why you uh, need the tongue-talking Holy Ghost. If you haven't speaking, I'm just going to say it. If you haven't spoken in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm just going to say it's, it's time out for playing. It's uh, time out for being politically correct. Because how you know you have it if you don't speak? Yes. My God, and when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to have power. Yes. Now you have the power. My God, it says, and the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the uh -huh. earth. Again, I say God never says that we won't go through hard times. Right. We won't go through times that are tough. But he is enabling us through his grace to be able to do all that we're required to do. Matthew 11 and 30 says, for my yoke is easy mm -hmm. and my burden is light. And see, this is, this is the only way that we're able to do. See, there's still a yoke on our neck. Mm -hmm. There still are burdens in this life. But through Jesus Christ, he says, my yoke is easy. Now, yeah. you want to sit up here and you want to be in the yoke of sin and Satan and the world. That's hard. Uh, like yeah. I always say, choose your hard. Do you want the hard that sin has to give or do you want the hard that God gives? Because his heart is developing you. Yes. Oh, blessed be they. Two more and I'm out of your way. The fifth type of grace is freedom. Freedom. See, sin turns us into addicts. We become slaves of sin. Mm -hmm. But the grace of God breaks the bondage. My God, grace gives us the power that we need to say no. We no longer have to go in the direction of the bondage of sin. All, but the grace of God allows us to have freedom because who we can shake it off. And now we can say no. Hebrews 4 and 16 says us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace yes. that we might obtain mercy Beautiful. and find grace to help in time of need. See, we're not using the grace that God has given us. Mm -hmm. So he's given us freedom, freedom to go boldly before the throne of grace. Yes. We don't have to be shaking our knees approaching God. That's he right. told us, come boldly, That's come right. tell me about your problem. And I'll help you through. I'll give you the freedom so you don't have to be in bondage of sin. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 22 says, Now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty or freedom Hallelujah. wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Jesus. See, if God ever stepped back and left us to our own devices, we would still be bound in sin like the world. That's, right. That's why the world is living in a bunch of can't help it. Oh, That's why the world falls apart. Because they don't have this freedom that you and I have. My God. And finally, finally, number six. The sixth type of grace is completion. Finally, God's grace is, is, is the grace of completion. This is where there will be a day where you and I will be fully restored to who we were meant to be. There will be no more sin. There will be no more struggle. Everything will be restored that was tore apart by sin. 
and we will worship in the presence of this amazing God who gave us the power of grace. And what I when am I talking about when I say completion? Eternal life. Yeah. It is because of that that we're able to be fully reconciled with God. Yeah. Back to what the state he always wanted us to be. Because Romans 5 and 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace yes. wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Glory. Titus 3 and 7 says that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope mm -hmm. of what? Eternal life. Glory. It is because of the grace of God that has given us that eternal life or the promise. Jesus. It is our responsibility, people of God, to walk in it now. Yeah. See, now that you know, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Now that you know all the grace that God has provided for you and I, mm -hmm. what are you going to do with it? Are you going to keep going back to your carnal mind? You can go back to lost hope? No. Mm -hmm. God is encouraging all of us to walk in what he has promised us. Well, I hope that this lesson was a blessing to Praise you. God. My God, it's yes. called the power of grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank and you. and and I, I hope that when you do when you are faced with the challenges of life, mm -hmm. that you will remember this word. If you forget, go to our YouTube channel, Resurrected Hope Ministries, and replay this message again yes. and again and again until it gets in your spirit. Thank we'll post you, it on there after today. It's always twenty four hours. Um, and then also, it is offering time. If this message, uh, hallelujah, was a blessing to you, please be a blessing to our ministry. We have several ways, several ways for you to give. We need your help, even if it's five, ten, fifteen dollars. If God gives you fifteen hundred, two thousand, or five hundred thousand, we'll take that too, because we want to build for, to have a place for you. We're still a cyber sanctuary. But we are looking to get into a building when God says so, and we need your help to do it. Amen. So we're asking that you will help us and give on tonight. All of our giving is online. We have Cash App, which is dollar sign, give, res, R-E-S, hope. We also have PayPal, which is the email to ask, to give through our PayPal is info at res-hope.com. Or we actually have the donate button on our website that makes it even easier. We also have Givelify. So if you're part of the Givelify app, download the app. We have instructions on our website. Feel free to give through that mode also. Yes. Again, all of these options, if you forget, just go to our website on our online giving page. We need your help. We need your help in order to continue to grow, yes. to build. There's several things that we need, and we need your help. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, be a blessing to us, and we'll continue to be a blessing to you. And most of all, God will bless you for being in these early stages of our ministry. You could say that you were responsible for putting that brick in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and as always, as we said earlier, if you want to be a part of helping us build, you don't necessarily have to be a member, but you may say, hey, I've got a hammer and a nail. I've got connections. I've got whatever you need. I want to help you. Then we ask that you co contact us. All of our contact information, again, is on our website. Yeah. All right, I know I've gone over on tonight, but I thought it was important. So I just want to say, bless you. Thank you so much for your time. And we hope to see you next Thursday, 7.30 p.m., right here in Jesus' name. God bless you, and good night. <music>